subscription-based monthly charges are eating everyone alive and no one is pissed off enough about it to do anything. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Paramount+, Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, Apple, Peacock, Xbox Live, YouTube+, Plus, Gym Memberships, World of Warcraft, Parking Your Car, even your printer ink comes with a freaking subscription. We were all better without these things and it is slowly eating us all alive. Each charge is a relatively small amount so we tend to not care as much, making us all passively complacent. What annoys me is software subscriptions. Many software companies won't even let you buy their product anymore. Adobe and Microsoft are good examples. And basically any enterprise software is subscription-based these days. You either pay $100 per year for a student, hobbyist license or $6,000 plus for a business license. Entrepreneurs can go frick themselves I guess. I have a spreadsheet with all my income and debts. I would suggest that other people keep track of their finances too. Okay but the thing is we're actively choosing to purchase those subscriptions. Netflix's viewership has taken a really big blow lately with them continuously raising the price and not compensating that with better content. I mean you could be pissed off enough to cancel some of those subscriptions. You don't need them in the same way you need rent, food or gas money. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone and everyone forgot what pirating was but me. Lol you don't have to buy any of that crap. Op has a point. I can manage my money. I have a massive spreadsheet with tax and everything on it. But everything does seem to be moving towards the paying forever model. I could understand antivirus software being subscription based because it's regularly updated. And Netflix is better being subscription based rather than paying for individual movies. But there are definitely things we only should pay for once when we actually need them and not have a regular payment going out every month or auto renewable every year. I am paying $150 less per month since cutting cable and I get access to all the content I want. It comes down to whether or not access is more important than access to what you want to consume. I don't want Apple TV. I don't want reality television. So I save dollar 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 opting out. So don't sign up for them? It's a lucrative model, but only financial illiterates are being eaten alive by subscriptions. If you don't account for that in your finances, you probably have bigger problems than subscriptions, honestly. Truthfully, subscriptions are fantastic if you're smart about it. As a gamer, I am blown away by the value of EA Play, for example. However, I refuse to buy EA products because it's a scummy company. The same is true of Amazon Prime, actually. Incredible value, but I refuse to support Amazon for the same reason as EA. In many ways, it's beneficial to use subscriptions, but like Netflix, it's only a matter of time before those subscription prices creep into ranges that aren't as valuable anymore. Netflix was a steal when I first signed up, but it's looking less worthwhile these days. I just dumped Peacock. Almost all of those are luxuries. You don't need them. If you can't afford them, don't get them. Take some ownership of your finances. Live within your means. You don't have to use any of those services. Entertainment has always been expensive in 1968, it was about $3 a month for cable, with three channels. That's about $25 today, about $8. Video games were at the arcade, and cost a few dollars for hour of play. You don't need ever service, every form of entertainment, all the time. Costs are going down, where cable now is an average cost of 40 cents compared to the 75 cents a channel in 1995. It's not a necessity. You don't have to consume any of it. Imagine not keeping track of your own finances. Also, who the frick pays for YouTube? Just torrent everything. Cancelled my Amazon Prime today. Those fricks were taking 15 bucks every month from me. I'm not even in the States. $15 is a lot of beer where I'm at. What pissed me off even more was the process of cancelling it. Fricking took forever to find then I found it. Was like three different, are you sure you want to cancel? But warded differently. Fricking assholes. Yes I'm sure. Yeah I know quite some people that have too many subscriptions on stuff. I also have a handful, but it actually use them in their convos decisions. I pay 3 euros for Amazon Prime, and 4 euros for HBO Max. I will never pay for Netflix or Disney. Leeching them off my family now, but if that stops I won't pay for them monthly. Stuff like printer ink, razor blades, underwear etc are stupid to have a subscription on. Renting devices is also stupid. Adobe says hi. Laugh in pirate. I have none of those. Just remember you are choosing to have them. Unpopular opinion. People should take responsibility for their monthly expenses and that includes subscription services. Don't feel entitled that the companies you buy stuff from should nanny your wallet for you. If the consumer is going to be so lethargic that they can't be bothered to keep track of what they are paying for why shouldn't businesses take advantage of that? If you're not using a service, don't pay for it. They are all voluntary. If you find they're too expensive, 
play offline games, watch ads on YouTube, exercise outside. Stop expecting things for free. We were all better without these things and it is slowly eating us all alive. Get control of your life, if these optional things are eating you alive, you've lost control. None of those are mandatory for you to subscribe to, I guess it's time to sit down with pen and paper and evaluate your costs. I subscribe to a VPN and torrent all the stuff. And I walk uphill, no need for a gym. This is what the you will own nothing and you will be happy misquote meme is about. It's not just the subscriptions you understand now. Everything is destined to become a subscription service, even basic possession of things. You will not own a car. You will take public transport for any regular commute and you will rent one when you have to otherwise. I am one of many people already living in this situation. I try to save money by riding a bicycle as well, which I own, but bicycles as a service is a thing now too and my city has already closed several popular bicycle parking areas and replaced them with pay per half hour rental cycles. You will not own clothes. You will wear them until you throw them in the recycle bin and then you will get new ones. Note an example of this in the movie Idiocracy where the lawyer has clothing dispensers in his apartment and no apparent means to wash them. Mike Judge is a prophet. Home ownership is dead. Going forward, the world will once again be divided between the hereditary chain of those who own the property and the nameless masses they permit to use it. Yes, feudalism is back, if it were ever really gone. Of course, now there will be a growing number of banks as opposed to individuals owning the fiefdoms. Asterisk I have seen a better implementation of this, in the PRC. My girlfriend's hometown has similar bicycles as a service, but the charges make much more sense. You pay the city office 200 yuan for a charge card, but you never have to charge the card. As long as you park the cycle you check out at another station within an hour, your ride is free, and there are stations all over town. This is what scares me most. There's no way to turn this back without a violent uprising. Basically, the housing industry realized its mistake in having ever allowed the concept of personal home ownership to take root. Now that every prospective homeowner without a seven-figure income has to take out a loan to buy a home, the banks have cemented their ultimate ownership of all the homes and all the land. Sooner or later, an owner will default on payment of their mortgage, and that home will be repossessed and become a rental to every home on the market. In fact, why even have houses when you can demolish them and rent apartments instead? Urbanization is another irreversible trend. I'm sure this system will eventually provide some kind of relief for the homelessness it generates, but not without that too exploiting the disadvantaged for a profit. There will be extremely minimal, affordable housing, but those who live in it will have no disposable income or savings. Have you considered not having nine streaming subscriptions at the same time? If you're better off without them, why not just cancel them? It's a monthly subscription so you have the power to cancel whenever you want. If you're spending money on it then you're the only one at fault. I don't understand what there is to be mad about here. It's a clever trick. Each individual subscription is not large enough to make you do anything about it. It's when you add them all up that you get the eye-watering expense total. Most people don't add expenses up and compare to income. Netflix and co know this. That's why most people are in the crap by mid-month or, in some cases, even earlier. You are being dramatic. No one is pissed off. Have you seen Netflix stock price lately? It's one of the worst performing stocks of the year. Op never heard of a budget. I have five monthly payments. Rent. Electric. Land tax. Mobile. Broadband. I have three I pay yearly for big discounts. Amazon Prime. Car insurance. Xbox Live. I am literally subscribed to none of those things and never have been. That being said, yeah, frick these crappy companies and their crappy subscriptions. Frick them in the ass with no lube.